to record this session. Uh, I hope it is okay. And, um, and now I give the floor to, um, to Marseille, our, our, um, our lead partner of the Digit Project, uh, Ms. Uh, Lorraine Falconetti. Please, Lorraine. Uh, thank you, thank you, Barbara. Uh, so we are delighted to welcome you uh, this morning. Um, just wanted to tell you first that the, the session is recorded because we will publish the videos uh, on our web, the website of the project, uh, udigit.marseille.fr. Um, we had the chance yesterday to attend and participate in rich discussions uh, to listen to testimonies from cities and networks uh, in Europe and, and cities uh, from the rest of the world, bringing to our work new perspective and uh, greater openness of mind. Um, after hearing the best practices from the partners of the UDigit project, we discussed uh, the digitalization of culture in times of pandemics in particular, and the importance of uh, digitaliz digitalization for our cities. Um, this morning uh, of discussions uh, will be dedicated in the digitalization of services to citizens. And uh, in addition, I would say that the, we will make a question and answer uh, session after each, each presentation. Uh, so please comment in the chat uh, to intervene. And uh, for the first presentation, we are happy to welcome Mrs. Marlette Madsen, who will uh, focus our speech uh, on the European policy uh, context. Um, Marlene is deputy head of the cabinet of uh, Commissioner Ferreira, responsible for cohesion and uh, reform. And besides the horizontal task of uh, deputy head of cabinet, she is also responsible uh, for the Directorate General for um, structure, Structural Reform Support, Public Administrations, uh, Cypriot Settlement Support, Brexit Adjustment Reserve, and the Peace Plus Program. We will uh, we really thank you uh, to be here. And uh, dear Marlene, please, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much uh, for, for this uh, kind introduction, but also uh, a very warm thank you for inviting me to, to speak to you all at this very, very important event. Um, <clears throat> I will uh, first of all have to, to say that unfortunately, I will not be able to, to be there for the entire session panel this morning, but uh, uh, I hope you will excuse me uh, that here before Christmas, there's always a lot of meetings taking place for, for adopting many things. Uh, but uh, I, I wanted to really thank you for inviting me for this and, and not least for organizing this uh, event. I hope from my presentation, it will be clear to you just how important it is for uh, Commissioner Ferreira but for, and for the entire commission uh, the focus on uh, ensuring the, the public administrations uh, have the support uh, uh, and that they are, are having the conditions to, to deliver everything uh, that is needed uh, in, during these times and in the transitions. So uh, I, I really think uh, your, your uh, event here today and yesterday is really of utmost importance. Um, I have the uh, I have sent some slides. I don't know if you can see them all, or or um, if if that's being uh, uh, uploaded by the organizer. I'm not sure. Or, uh, but um, because I was uh, at least a, a, no? yes. Uh, um, uh, shall we uh, share them, or you prefer to share them by yourself? It would be great if you could actually, because. Okay. Uh, just yes, that's possible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, yes. Just let me know if it is visible. Yes, it, it is. It is. No, thank you very much. Um, I, so so I, I have the great task of talking to you about uh, everything that uh, we here in the European Commission is trying to do uh, to support both the digitalization but also uh, public administrations. And in, including in this is, is of course uh, very much uh, focused on uh, the key role that the Commissioner 
Ferreira has and, and her support uh, DG, the DG reform that was presented earlier on. Um, I will focus mainly on three issues uh, in my presentation. First, I will give you a, a, uh, a, a short overview of uh, the main uh, component we've had here in the Commission, the digital decade. I will also give you uh, a short uh, run through of what we have done just this year alone when it comes to uh, the focus on the importance of public administrations. And thirdly, I will give a very short introduction to our main tool to help uh, uh, provide support to central, regional, and local administrations uh, wishing out to carry out wishing to carry out reforms in order to be able to provide these uh, uh, services uh, at the highest quality to citizens. Uh, but let me first say, uh, the last two years, public administrations at various different levels have been the backbone of Europe. Uh, in all that has happened during these challenging times with the COVID, with uh, all the transitions, it is the public administrations that have maintained uh, business continuity, citizen services at high level, uh, and it's the public administrations that have kept Europe going. Um, from healthcare to schooling, from business support to job protection, public administrations have maintained access to services under rapidly changing circumstances. And as a testimony to, to this success, uh, public trust in government has, over the last two years, increased in two thirds of EU member states. Um, on the first part that I uh, wanted to, to present to you, the, um, uh, the um, digital decade, it presents what uh, the European Commission uh, has presented as, as one of the main priorities in, in moving towards a Europe fit for the digital age. Um, the uh, EU digital strategy wants this transformation to work for uh, people. Um, sorry, I'm having here some problem. I hope it's not on your side as well. Uh, the, e the EU's uh, digital strategy wants this transformation to work for people and businesses while helping uh, to achieve its targets. Could we move to the next slide? I, uh, thank you. Uh, by uh, helping to achieve its target of, uh, at the same time, uh, the, the digital uh, uh, ambitions, but doing it at the same time as also achieving its target of climate neutral Europe by 2050. The Commission is determined to empower people with uh, a new generation of technologies and to make this, uh, this being the Europe's digital decade. Uh, Europe must now strengthen its di digital sovereignty uh, and set standards instead of following those uh, of others. With the digital decade, uh, we have, uh, Europe sets a clear focus on data, technology and infrastructure. Um, and finally, Europe's digital decade sets digital targets for 2030 and intends to empower businesses, people in a human-centered, sustainable and more prosperous di digital future. Uh, if we could move to the next slide, please. Thank you. On March 2021, the Commission presented uh, this vision for Europe's digital transformation for by 2030, which is called the Digital Compass for the EU's Digital Decade. Uh, and it's a key component of the entire vision on, on the digital decade. This one uh, is centered around four cardinal points, as you can see here on the slide. There is the digital skills, which you must also have been faced with being really a, a key asset, but also not always easy to build and to maintain, uh, retain. Uh, but secondly, it's also around uh, the secure and sustainable digital infrastructures. It centers around the digital transformation of businesses, but also the digitalization of public services. So these are the four key areas that we are trying to set targets for to reach this uh, ambitious goal by 2030. Um, we can, we could say, I could say an awful lot, you can see here from the next slide, uh, some of all our targets that we have set uh, for 2030. This is really just some of them. You can see that we have tried to be very ambitious and cover many areas uh, surrounding these four. But what I really wanted to emphasize here today, since you've uh, only given me a little time and I have to try to be concise, 
uh, is really what does this mean for digitization of citizen services? Because uh, you will know very well uh, just the challenges here. And the targets we've tried to set uh, with this uh, uh, compass is, for instance, and I'm only mentioning some of them. So by 2030, the EU's objective is to ensure that the democratic life and public, uh, and public services online will be fully accessible to everyone, including, including people with disabilities, and benefit from a, a digital environment that provides easy to use, efficient and personalized services and tools with high security and privacy standards. It's also about secured e-voting, uh, that it would encourage greater public participation on democratic life. User-friendly services will allow citizens of all ages and businesses of all sizes to influence uh, the direction and outcome of government activities more efficiently and improve public services. Government as a pop as a platform will enact a, a new way of building digital public services. The platform will provide holistic and easy access to public services, which, is, which are seamlessly integrated. These are services that provide uh, advanced capabilities for data processing, artificial intelligence, and virtual reality. Europe will move to a world by, whereby services are digital by default with businesses and SMEs in particular that are incentivized to increase their level of digitization and with it, uh, their productivity gains. The gap to reach this vision is still significant. Uh, despite the increasing use of public services online, services provided digitally are often basic and diverse from region to region. Filling in forms in a computer is a, is a step in the right direction, but for an actual digitization, we need to adapt our business processes for the digital world. Europe must harness digitization to drive a paradigm change in, in how citizens, public administration and democratic institutions interact, ensuring interoperability across all levels of government and public and across public services. But also another area is, for instance, telemedicine. During the pandemic, telemedicine consultations grew more in, uh, in one month than they did in 10 years. Uh, and this played a key role in keeping queues down at hospitals and maintaining patients in good health and keeping doctors and nurses safe also at times. The ability for European citizens to access and control access to uh, the electronic health records uh, across Europe should be greatly improved by 2030 based on common technical specifications for health data sharing, interoperability, developing the secure infrastructure, as well as taking actions to facilitate the public uh, accessibility of sharing health information with medical community. Another area is the European digital identity, uh, the government in the palm of your hand. By 2030, the EU framework should have led to a wide development of a trusted user controlled identity, allowing each citizen to control their own online interactions and presence. Users can make a full use of online services easily and throughout the EU while preserving their privacy. Uh, yet another area is the smart data platforms. Integrating data across uh, different sectors and citizens is key to improve the quality of everyday life for European citizens. Today, most of the digital services uh, these platforms offer are limited to basic services such as smart parking, smart lightning, public transport telematics. Digitization plays a key role in the development of smart villages with communities in rural areas uh, that use innovation, innovative solutions to build on their local strengths and opportunities. Platform in rural and urban uh, and smart city communities will be powered by digital technologies and will offer services much as, such as multimodal intelligent transport systems, rapid emergency assistance in case of accidents, targeted waste management solutions, traffic management, urban planning, smart energy lightning solutions, or resource optimization. Using green public procurement criteria can boost the demand for green digital transformation. And finally, an area I would like to highlight is digitization of judicial systems. The digital transformation should also enable modern and efficient justice systems, enforcement of consumer rights, and increased effectiveness 
effectiveness of public action, including law enforcement and investigation capacities. What is illegal offline is also illegal online, and law enforcement must be equipped to deal with more and more sophisticated digital crimes. Now, this was just a very brief, uh, quick uh, presentation of what it is that we are trying to achieve uh, and the goals that, that we have agreed with member states for uh, um, reaching these uh, digital decade. So in the path for, for the digital decade, the Commission has also said uh, what it entails that it on, on this slide, you can see we've also tried to not just have the targets, but also look a bit at how we can in, encourage uh, local authorities and member states to work together to achieve these, how we can set uh, monitoring and evaluation so we ensure that we will actually achieve these targets. Uh, and so this is also all encompassed in, in this uh, proposal that we've come with. But let me now move to uh, the importance of public administrations. Um, and here um, we have uh, not just Commissioner Ferreira, who has the coordinating role here in the Commission to, to look at uh, policy, uh, public administration, and how to coordinate among all the DGs uh, here in the Commission to ensure uh, uh, a, a coherent approach uh, in all our different proposals towards uh, pub supporting public administration. We have uh, tried this year to really emphasize the focus on this, also because of the crisis and all the challenges that public administrations have been through during the crisis. So we have uh, emphasized over and over again uh, how what a crucial role the public administrations, um, and again, both the central, regional and the local, have been had during the crisis, but will also have during the recovery, will also have during the use of all these funds that the European Commission has been uh, aimed at uh, member states and, and regions to support the process. Um, we have uh, seen over and over again that one of the key ingredients for sustainable, resilient and future-proof development is indeed an effective, responsive, efficient and service-oriented public administration. So in April, we published uh, a, a very important report that is called Supporting Public Administrations in EU Member States to Deliver Reforms and Prepare for the Future. In this very thorough uh, assessment, we have looked at the status across uh, Europe, but also looked at uh, what should be the key areas to try to help uh, members, uh, member states and public administrations in, in, phase, how, in, in the challenges they, they face in, in, in these uh, transformations and in delivering uh, everything that, that both the citizens and uh, the businesses, but also us here in the, in, in the European Commission would like uh, them to be able to deliver. This document is really a rich source of information, and I would recommend, if you haven't already seen it, the, to go and have a look at it. But one of the key challenges identified is the unprecedented speed of, speed of technological change, and thereby also for public administrations, how to in itself incorporate uh, all the, the, the digitalization uh, of, of the public administration, but also of its uh, services to citizens. This is a double change. The public administrations must uh, uh, take the lead in helping the society and the economy to adjust the to, to the modern economy and the digital revolution. Um, this has posed many challenges for public administration, both for staff, uh, for changing how it's providing its services, and for having uh, the knowledge to have also the, the, the security and the process re-engineering, the data literacy, etc. It's not, it's not about just digitalizing old ways of working. It's really about innovating how we work. Um, this is what we have tried to set out in, in the report. And from this is also uh, showing that reforms must, must reach regional, city, and local administration. Today, these administrations are responsible for implementing 70% 70, 70 of EU legislation. So it's not just the central government. Often that's where the focus is, but really that is, is, is a misunderstanding. It is the, the, the regional city and local administration that are implementing 70% of EU legislation. 
and one third and implementing one third of public spending. So regional administration are crucial. And for to support this as well, we've also created our flagships uh, for our 22, uh, two, 2022 call for technical support that is centered around digital uh, uh, government services. And with the deadline 21st of October this year, we also had a very uh, uh, successful high level conference with more than 1000 people attending here in November. And where several um, ministers also attended showing that this is gaining more and more uh, importance also uh, uh, across governments uh, across Europe. Uh, we had at this conference uh, two important workshops that challenge that address the challenges around digitalization of multi level interoperability governance within European public administration and public administration and digital transformation in the digital decade. And it was clear from our conference that this is really one of the key, key challenges. But in order to try to, uh, there is so much I would like to tell you, but to try to, to uh, be a bit uh, speedy here, I can always go into to detail if you wish to. Um, then after uh, our conference, we set up a, a group of experts that has been done today that will help EU and member states also in, in shaping where are the areas to look for in the future to come. But let me move then to how do we support uh, mainly the uh, the uh, member states uh, in in strengthening the public administration and, and addressing these uh, key challenges. And this is through our technical support instrument. And I hope many of you have already heard of it, but it is a relatively new uh, creation at the European Commission. So. Uh, uh, it could very well be that it hasn't uh, uh, reached uh, everyone yet. But this is really a key instrument for uh, not for giving money to administrations, not to give money to, 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 to local authorities, but to give knowledge, to give expertise, to give support for the changes that are needed to be able to provide these essential services to citizens. And in this technical support instrument, um, which was created in 2017, we have by now had 1,200 technical support projects uh, in, in various uh, member states. And we've had not, nothing less than 160 projects in the field of administration and uh, public administration. So uh, this is where we've really built a lot of expertise, a lot of knowledge to uh, be able to, to help. So the technical support instrument is, is a powerful tool that can enable member states to carry out exactly the reform they need. Uh, everything is tailor-made, everything is demand-driven, so it's not EU coming and telling uh, uh, um, mayors or, or, or regional presidents what they should do. This is about uh, member states, regions, local authorities themselves looking at their administration saying, I, could, I want to change something, I would like to see what is the state of the art uh, knowledge, advice, expertise in making such a reform and then putting in an application which can be done once a year for, for, to the technical support instrument. And the, re the support is delivered immediately. It's not like many other things with the European Commission or with public procurement where you have to wait maybe, you know, maybe a year, maybe two years. Here we really do it at the highest speed speed possible. Of course, also respecting uh, everything on financial management. Uh, um, but this is, and it's tailor-made. So whenever, uh, for instance, uh, a local commune comes to us and say, we would like uh, to provide, be able to provide these services uh, digitally to, or for instance, digitizing VAT services. Uh, what can we do? Uh, have you tried, do you know other areas in Europe where they've done this? Do you know anything about uh, what would be the best tools? What would be the best uh, processes? How to best handle data and security? And we can help design that and we will find the best experts and we will uh, be there with, the, with uh, the authorities all the way through. But it's really demand driven and entirely tailor made and it's done as quickly as possible. So, um, some, some figures I would like to, to, to show you uh, in the next slide is that this uh, uh, support instrument um, has been given 
864 million for the, the this next uh, what we call multi-annual financial framework that the commission works with it doesn't sound of a lot of money for those who are used to to look at for instance cohesion funds but it's because it's money handled entirely by the European Commission and all administration is done by the European Commission. All procurement is done by the European Commission. So for the local administration that receives the help and the support, they do not have to do any of all of this. They only have to um, have the ownership and the buy-in in the reform that they want to do, in the knowledge they need uh, uh, to carry out this reform. All 27 member states have made use of this. Uh, it also uh, covers a wide range of reform areas in addition to uh, the digital transition and includes uh, working towards green transition, enacting judicial and financial reforms or targeting health and long-term care. And it covers everything from reform phase to design to implementation and evaluation. Over the last two years, we've seen a high increase in demand for help in digital section and together with the green transition, uh, these are, are the, really the key areas that member states come to us for, to, to get help for. But maybe if we can uh, move to uh, the next slide, this is just to, so you're aware of all the areas that you can uh, apply for help with. Uh, and if we go to the next uh, area, we also, as I mentioned, designed a, 20, a, trend, a flagship project for 2022 that specifically addresses uh, the digitization skills or challenges, development of resilient, innovative and human centric digital government services. These flagship projects is something that we try to do again to where we see that there are needs in many member states, we go in and define it and make sure that all, several member states can join and at the same time and thereby also learn from each other. And again, it can be all levels. Um, and our, our idea is really to make it again even quicker, even more smooth in the whole process, but still keeping the individuality uh, and, and this tailor-made component. So uh, if we go to the next slide, as uh, I know I'm running out of time, this is uh, so you can see all the flagships that we designed uh, for next year, where the uh, deadline of application was 21st of October this year. We did receive, uh, and you can see the blue ones, all those that are related to digitization. The third one is, of course, the ones of, of, of key interest for today. Um, I can say that we did receive a lot of applications for this uh, flagship project, and we are assessing them right now. And actually today, as we speak, uh, there is a big uh, board looking at the applications and, and selecting those. Uh, uh, projects that we will uh, provide support to. The thing is with the technical support instrument that popularity is always a bit of a, a, a double-edged sword because unfortunately it means that we cannot support all of those we would like to simply because uh, we receive a lot of applications. But what we do and what I would advise uh, because of this is should there be something where you would be interested in getting support uh, uh, for something that you can uh, uh, see is very important for the reforms you would wish to, wish to undertake. What you need to do is already now, already in general, any time during the year, but as early as possible, contact DT Reform. And because you are, they are allowed to engage with you and help you design how could this be done the best possible way in the support they would deliver. Not, not giving any instructions on what reform you ought to do. Because again, it, this is, this is a, the ownership is entirely on, on, on the administrations. But TG Reform can go in and help design a, a good, quick project with the best experts possible. And so, and they are, can help you all throughout the year. Uh, so just because I mentioned that there was a deadline 31st of October and there is a board today, this doesn't mean that it's too late. They can always throughout the year be engagement with DG reform in figuring out what can be done in of help for when you have a reform. And since it's an annual process, it also means that next year we'll have a big call again. Um, and we will have a, a launch conference, uh, most likely June, not 100% settled yet, but most likely in June, where we will be presenting uh, again the calls for next round. So 
I would uh, advise you to pay attention to this, also getting contract with your, your, the central government, which has the coordinating role in each member state. But anytime, any level of, of, of uh, public authorization can contact uh, DG reform and get any advice they want in, in how this should be done. So uh, this was a very, very quick uh, presentation of what the EU has been trying to focus on, how we try to help. Uh, and and uh, the, the huge, I hope I've also managed to portray in this short presentation, the huge importance uh, we, we, pay, we, 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 we give to the, the role of public administration. Um, and I, I hope very much, even if I talked a lot about 2021, uh, that you will also notice that uh, in 2022, we will definitely continue this very important work strand from the side of the European Commission. Uh, this expert group that I uh, explained to you will have its first uh, meeting, the launching the group in mid-January. Uh, and we will also have a big ministerial conference with the French presidency in February. So certainly uh, we will continue to take the work forward uh, and we would be happy to also con to continue engaging uh, with you. Uh, and that was just a, yeah, a, a short presentation of a very, very important work. Thank you very much uh, for, for this um, um, brilliant intervention and, and uh, so many information inside uh, for us. And I don't know if we have a question. There is no, no question in the assembly, um, uh, no, no question in the chat. Um, do we have something? Pierre, you wanted to ask something or do you want me to? I might have a question. I don't yes. Know, I'm in the chat. Okay, but, but please go ahead. We can we can discuss together. <clears throat> so the the question is um, the the digitalization of services and and business area may lead uh, to the replacement of certain jobs or tasks performed um, by humans by artificial intelligence. Um, how to limit this problem? Yes. Yes, no, yes. I, I know that there is a lot of concern uh, uh, to on, on the impact of labor market of arti artificial intelligence. I think uh, without being uh, an, an expert and it's not directly under the portfolio of Commissioner Ferreira, um, but I have noticed uh, several reports uh, being debated here in the commission, but also seen many reports from, from OECD and other uh, um, important organizations and research institutes that are pointing to the fact that actually we might not see a, a, a big decline in, in uh, uh, employment, but indeed probably a transformation of what uh, the, the jobs needed would be. And I think actually the digitization of, of, of uh, the services for citizens have already shown this, no? And in public administration. So uh, I, I remember uh, a technical support project that, that I led myself uh, in one uh, member states, uh, um, uh, one of the, the main ministries in a member state. Uh, the, 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 ref the whole uh, issues they were faced with, just to give a con concrete example, was that uh, the whole setup of what kind of employees they had for the ministry had been set in, in uh, a, a kind of a, a, a law uh, 20 years ago. Now, certainly uh, that meant that they did not have the amount of staff with IT skills needed, for instance. They did not have the staff where, with the, the kind of services that today are needed or skill sets that are needed. And I think that is what, that will be our main challenge. It will probably not be uh, that uh, artificial intelligence will eliminate, will reduce the number of jobs but there will be a change to what jobs it is that, uh, that we need. And we certainly need a lot more people with digital skills, a lot more people who can do coding, who can, 
uh, understand the, the impact of, on the security and, and uh, in, ensure uh, proper safe handling of, of citizens' data, for instance. And, and that will be our challenge. And there in the Commission, we've actually set out and we've had a, a lot of focus on both the digital skills, but also ensuring these kind of competences will be part of the education framework, etc. Not just in the normal education, but also in certification courses that can be learned, uh, uh, taken and trained later on. So I, I think we cannot avoid these changes. We, it's, it's a bit like with globalization. We can try to control it. We can try to control the, the digitization and how it's, hand, uh, how, it's been, uh, how it's evolving, but we cannot stop it. So we have to ensure that we manage, and, uh, manage it the best possible way. And at the same time, that we really ensure that we have the skill sets needed. And for public administrations, that you can main, retain those staff. Because I know from many uh, uh, administrations that I've been working with, they train uh, their staff to be the best in certain uh, IT skills. And immediately, they can go and get incredibly uh, good and, and well-paid jobs in the private sector. So I think it's, it's those kind of challenges that we need to focus on in, in ensuring this transition. I don't know if I should just go to the next question or perhaps I can I can I can read it. <laughs> so yeah. thank you for that. Um, could you briefly outline the steps uh, a local regional administration should take uh, to seek support from uh, DG reform? Yes, of course, uh, of course, uh, be happy to. First of all, the very, very first thing contact DG reform. They have uh, on the web, there is a, a very uh, easy in the website that should be very easy to navigate. There is a functional mailbox, but there is also an organogram. You can always contact people directly. You can see who is, the, for instance, uh, uh, the person in charge of public uh, administration and, and governance. That's uh, a colleague can call Daniele Dotto. Uh, feel free to always contact DG reform. That's really the first thing because since uh, this is a very different tool than you know many other things, the, they can help you make sure that if you put in an application, it will be of the best possible quality and thereby have a chance of getting selected. Because this is a tool that uh, the, the, uh, the, the technical support instrument is, is really based on the best quality projects win. And so there is no geographical distribution, there is no a distribution on, on areas, it's really the, about the quality of the application and, and the impact it is deemed to have. Uh, so the first thing is contact DG reform. The second thing is, uh, con the, if you don't know it yourself, DG reform can tell you who is uh, uh, having the coordinating role uh, in your country. And that is because that varies how member states do it. Sometimes it's uh, a ministry, sometimes it's a, a cabinet office under the, the prime minister. It varies. And then you need to contact them. But anyone can put in an apl application. So there is no limitation uh, here. But of course, the member state in, in, in question might uh, try to uh, send a, a package together for all uh, for, for this country. I know some countries are trying to manage it a bit more at central level, but that uh, uh, con the first thing, contact is reform. Secondly, contact your, your coordinating authority in, in your member state, and then work with DG reform throughout the months in building this uh, application. And then by 31st of October next year, send in your request. And it's a two-page application form. It's not these normal, long, lengthy, uh, you know, it's, it's very smooth, it's very simple. Well, I, I think that we have, um, for now, no more question 
um, from the audience. I, I, I would like to uh, thank you very much for your advices, um, your really interesting presentation, um, and I'm sure that we all learn uh, a lot. <laughs> so thank you, thank you very much. And um, perhaps I can um, give back the floor to Barbara. Yes, thank yes. you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Madsen, and for your contribution. Um, I now leave the floor to the head of International Affairs Office, Ms. Mr. Gianluca Saba, that will introduce our colleague of the ICT and Digital Agenda Department that will speak uh, after. Please, Gianluca. Thank you, Barbara. And good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm also, I, I've been very inspired by Mrs. Madsen's presentation. Uh, I, I was wondering and thinking uh, how long is the path that we have uh, uh, walked during these years? Uh, yesterday, we talked about. Uh, a, a pioneering project that we launched uh, six years ago and we coordinated the urban project named Interactive Cities. Now, uh, um, the world has changed and uh, the digital uh, transformation is uh, here under, under our eyes. So um, let's make the most of the insights by, by Mrs. Madsen. And I'm pleased to share, uh, to introduce, first of all, our colleague from the Technologies, Digitalization and Smart Cities Department, Mrs. Ilaria Pittaluga. She works in the Digitalization, Digital Transformation, di Digital Agenda and, uh, and POM Metro Office, that is the, the office dedicated to the structural funds management here uh, in Genova. Ilaria has also worked a lot uh, with us in the cultural department and she coordinated the former um, interreg uh, project uh, forget heritage so she has a great experience in uh, managing eu projects we uh, enhanced our cooperation between the international relations department and the digitalization uh, uh, in digital agenda office because uh, we, as I was saying, we understand the importance of the digital transition in the uh, EU policies, as explained by Mrs. Madsen. And I think that for the digitalization office is very important to have this uh, international perspective, this dimension of exchange with other cities and uh, the possibility to share the great experience of the uh, citizens folder, the fascicolo del cittadino, that Ilaria will explain today. So, Ilaria, the floor is yours. I thank you again for being so active and uh, uh, always collaborating with, with us. And uh, please. Thank you, Gianluca. Thank you, Barbara. And thank you all for having me today with you. Um, I will share... Um, Oops, what happened? Excuse me. Two years of pandemic and I'm not uh, <laughs> able. Okay, here we are. Can you see my, uh, no, now? Can you see it? Yes, perfectly. Okay, thanks. Thank okay, let's launch the presentation, okay. So uh, thank you again to all of you for having me here. Um, I'm Ilaria Pittaluga, as uh, uh, Gianluca said before, I'm uh, in, the, in the ICT department of the municipality of Genoa, uh, working uh, on uh, the digital transformation office. And uh, I work on um, several projects uh, related to the digita digitalization of uh, public services, uh, citizen-oriented. 
Um, what I'm going to tell you about today is uh, a digital platform that Agena has set up in order to collect uh, in uh, one only place all the online services dedicated to the citizen. And we call it uh, Citizen Digital Folder. Um, to introduce it to you, I would like to, um, to show you a short video that we prepared to introduce the platform uh, to, to the city. The narration is in Italian, but uh, we added the English subtitle for you to <laughs> uh, catch all the, um, the word. Genova è una città in movimento che guarda il futuro e che sta cambiando. L'innovazione e la qualità dei servizi si accompagnano alla grande vivibilità di una città sul mare. Il Comune di Genova migliora i servizi dedicati ai cittadini e digitali. Lo fa attraverso piattaforme come Segnalaci, un punto d'ascolto interattivo per le segnalazioni e i suggerimenti sul territorio. Il Geoportale, che permette di visualizzare serie di dati legati al territorio. E il fascicolo del cittadino, punto d'accesso ai tuoi dati e ai servizi online. Il fascicolo del cittadino permette di utilizzare online diversi servizi del è il raccoglitore digitale che contiene tutte le tue pratiche e i tuoi documenti e ti permette di ritrovarli sempre in maniera rapida e semplice. È l'innovazione digitale del Comune di Genova che migliora e semplifica i rapporti del cittadino con la pubblica amministrazione della propria città. Il fascicolo del cittadino ti consente di accedere agli uffici comunitari rimanendo comodamente a casa, senza spostare il tempo e da mobile puoi collegarti ovunque. E l'innovazione digitale a Genova può essere anche questo, non compilare una pratica dove puoi anziché passare il tuo tempo in comune o sportivo. Collegati a fascicolo del cittadino.it direttamente da computer, tablet o smartphone. Per l'accesso puoi utilizzare SPIP, il sistema pubblico di identità digitale, o la tua carta di identità elettronica. Con un'unica password avrai accesso a tutte le tue pratiche. Sono molti i servizi già utilizzabili e tanti altri saranno disponibili nei prossimi mesi. Puoi visualizzare i dati tuoi e del tuo numero familiare, verificare i dati di influenza del tuo derivato, avere informazioni sulla mobilità in città, pagare il tribunale, fare segnalazioni all'amministrazione e rapportarsi con le biblioteche comunali. Ma non solo. Sarà possibile richiedere certificati e prendere appuntamento con gli uffici di comune. Genova cambia e si rinnova. Scopri il fascicolo del cittadino per semplificare il rapporto con la pubblica amministrazione genovese. Okay, um, in the past years, uh, the municipality of Genoa implemented and uh, is uh, still working on now on several projects, uh, uh, all designed and developed, uh, developed uh, to be uh, all around the citizen. Um, the goal is, uh, increase, uh, is to increase the public uh, on online is to increase the online public services and improve them through digital technologies. Um, this to optimize citizen relation with the general public administration. All the uh, new platform we are working now are all designed to be uh, mobile friendly, safe, easy to use, implementable over time and transparent. And also the citizen digital folder is, uh, be, was built up uh, following these uh, principles. The citizen digital folder is uh, a key project uh, within the roadmap of the online service uh, digitalization process of the municipality of Genoa. Uh, it's financed with uh, uh, EU funds uh, through the Italian National Operative Program uh, uh, on Metropolitan Cities uh, that is dedicated to uh, the urban sustainable development of the 14 uh, metropolitan cities in uh, Italy. Um, Designed as a single access point towards citizen personal data, the citizen di digital folder is uh, a digital repository storing personal information and documents, uh, allowing for everyone to quickly and easily find them. The citizen digital folder is free. Uh, by visiting uh, www.fascicolodelcittadino.it or by accessing through the homepage of the institutional website of the Municipality of Genoa, 
citizens can land on their own citizen folder. Uh, they can do it through a strong authentication through the public digital identity system or with their uh, electronic identity card. And this allow uh, to um, uh, keep all these uh, data stored in a safe place, a place uh, without uh, any risk of uh, leak of data. The citizen folder is immediate since uh, the first access, uh, all the information and services uh, are already available for the user. Uh, the, uh, as I said to you before, the platform is uh, designed around the user. And uh, in fact, the citizen folder is built up uh, in a personalized, personalized way and uh, organized in thematic section. Uh, each section represents the different aspects and phases in which a user need to get in touch with the municipality, such as uh, the citizen section, the parent section, the um, section dedicated to the mobility, the local mobility in town, the section dedicated to um, the payment or the monitoring of taxes, and uh, another section is dedicated to um, um, uh, the services connected to local library. Um, the digital uh, folder, uh, I told you before, that is uh, personalized on user. In fact, uh, um, having access to uh, uh, your own uh, uh, homepage, uh, you will see only the um, uh, the section you are interested in. For example, if you have kids, you will see this section. If you do not have kids uh, going to school, so you don't need to have any kind of information of, uh, on educational services, you will not see this section in order for the user to have uh, an overview on uh, um, services only interesting uh, uh, himself. The citizen folder is easy to use. Uh, it was designed to be easy accessible and uh, uh, the homepage offers uh, a clear and simple overview on the uh, different areas and services also uh, supported by very simple uh, graphic icons uh, representing uh, the, um, the service. The citizen folder is convenient. Uh, it allows to consult your data and information and have access to online services uh, anytime and anywhere. Uh, since it, that it uh, can be accessed conveniently from a computer, a tablet, a smartphone. In fact, uh, uh, we designed it up to, uh, as a web app, so it's easy accessible uh, from any kind of device. Um, the digital folder is a time saver. It avoids uh, having to physically go to public offices and move uh, around the city. And this allows to um, save time and to reconcile family and working life uh, in the best possible way. The citizen folder is for everyone. Uh, it was uh, uh, not thinking uh, only for citizen resident in general, but also to a uh, city user. Uh, one of its uh, innovative, uh, innovative aspects uh, is uh, that it is aimed to anyone who has to do with the territory and the municipality of Genoa. So of course, a citizen residing in Genoa will have uh, um, uh, a wide spectrum of services available, but uh, we wanted also for uh, people passing through or working or uh, uh, visiting Genoa to have access to the uh, single uh, um, services of their interest. Uh, for example, if uh, you uh, are living in another town and you uh, came to Genoa to um, for work, for example, for one day, and unfortunately, uh, uh, you uh, took a, a, um, a car, uh, traffic fine, uh, you will see directly on uh, the section dedicated to local mobility, and you can uh, easily pay, pay it online. 
I hope for you, for everyone to not uh, take any kind of, uh, of fine, but uh, if unfortunately you, you take one, uh, uh, take one, you can at least easily pay it. At last, the, the citizen folder is uh, in evolution. Uh, it is an incremental project where uh, the offer of the services uh, grow uh, and uh, it, it is continu continuously integrated uh, with new developed units. We uh, recently uh, published uh, um, a new uh, section uh, that is a sustainable me for ex that includes uh, for example services all related to recycling systems uh, or uh, uh, green uh, uh, green action uh, or related uh, to the the waste management we are working now on uh, a section dedicated to um, uh, the real estate uh, to uh, its um, uh, um, personal houses uh, where uh, people uh, can find uh, uh, services related to, for example, plants, uh, uh, parking permits, uh, local parking permits, uh, and, uh, and so on. And so we cannot see for now an end to, to this uh, project because uh, um, every month, every year, new services uh, to be uh, digitalized uh, are um, uh, arriving to our office and we uh, are planning to uh, to implement uh, any um, Genoa municipality services uh, uh, all through uh, the 2022 and uh, we have plans also for 2023 so it is uh, a, a project uh, in continuous evolution. So this is one of the way that uh, in, in which uh, Genoa is changing and renewing itself from the digital point of view. Uh, I've been very quick in my presentation. I don't uh, know if uh, I can, maybe I can show you a little bit of uh, the citizen folder in uh, the demo mode that, uh, uh, we set up if you are interested. Uh, meanwhile, if you if uh, some question uh, uh, are um, are in the chat for me, I don't know if uh, I can reply while showing the the inside of. Okay, here we are. Of course, I'm sorry, it is in Italian for now. We are uh, thinking about translating also in, uh, in other languages to be available also for non-Italian uh, uh, speaker, uh, citizen, uh, of course, in Genoa. And uh, I don't know, for example, this is the section dedicated to the uh, the the user as a citizen in here in this section all the data uh, anagraphical data electoral data and house data are collected uh, accessible in uh, uh, only one click uh, in this section all data related to the uh, anagraphical uh, uh, sorry the the family living in the same uh, uh, address of the user are collected. Then uh, we have uh, um, a service uh, related to the um, change of address, both for people already living in Genoa or people and people uh, living uh, uh, outside the, out, uh, the area of Genoa. And uh, here there are the services connected to the to request of uh, uh, certificates. In this section, all the uh, services connected to educational and uh, food services uh, um, are um, 
included. For example, you can pay the food services, uh, but you can manage also it. Uh, you can uh, 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 verify the enrollment. Uh, you can ask for a special diet for ethical or earth uh, reasons. Uh, you can consult, for example, the, uh, the menu of the day of your kids uh, and verify the um, uh, your kids, uh, the presence of your kids uh, uh, within the month, and uh, you Ilaria? can also, yes. Okay, if you don't mind, I can. Uh, we receive the, um, a question in the, okay. in the platform. Okay. In the platform, sorry, in the chat, uh, from Esmeralda uh, Marsman. Do you have a national citizen platform as well in Italy? If we, uh... um, there is a national platform, and then I have a, a question mm -hmm. from from me. But please. I if go first can. with uh, Esmeralda yes. thank, question. Thank you, Esmeralda. Uh, no, we do not have. Uh, uh, we are strongly invited by uh, our national uh, regulation and the uh, big cities are moving to uh, develop this kind of tools. Uh, I think that uh, almost... Uh, uh, um, the most of the metropolitan cities in Italy have a tool like that, but uh, each uh, uh, city is developing uh, the platform uh, uh, in base of their needs uh, um, and uh, with a different feature, of course. Uh, so, for example, uh, here in Genoa, we decided to, uh, to open it uh, to... Uh, all Italian citizens having uh, the public identity service uh, or uh, a um, electronic uh, uh, ID. Uh, but uh, um, uh, cities like, for example, uh, Turin in the north of Italy decided only to uh, close it to uh, Turin uh, uh, citizen. Uh, in, this, in our case, in general, we decided to um, uh, present only uh, services uh, for citizens, but uh, in other cities, uh, they are showing all the online service. Um, so we are moving in the same way, but in, uh, in parallel. Uh, we have uh, some point in common, but uh, uh, the, um, we have not the same tool. Thank you very much. Okay. And I love the icons. <laughs> it looks very, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's really good. <laughs> Are they clear? <laughs> okay, also for non-Italian speaker. <laughs> yeah, I, I really like it and the colors you're using. So it looks really, uh, how do you say, it's uh, open to use. So yes, yeah, really nice. Okay. So I see other, um, okay, and, uh... a question from Lorraine. Uh, mm -hmm. Since how long the platform is online? What has been the membership of citizen? Do you have any data on the public? Uh, the, um, the platform is uh, online since, uh, uh, if I remember well, the uh, last month of uh, 2020, uh, if I remember well. And... Uh, what has been? Uh, can you um, explain better what you mean with the membership of citizen, please? Yes, I, I meant. Um, do you know um, how do uh, citizens uh, agreed on using this platform? I mean, uh, were they willing to? Uh, did you communicate a lot on that? Uh, oh, okay, okay. That um, said, uh, we uh, uh, had. A, a structured uh, a communication campaign by using both traditional and digital uh, uh, communication uh, uh, channel. Uh, we uh, planned it with our department of communication. So we moved uh, uh, in uh, uh, such way. So we, um, um, we create a... a a graphic that we are still using, a graphic uh, um, guidelines, and then we uh, um, prepared the, regarding the traditional way. Um, I don't know how to say it in English, you know, the big poster along the street. And then we um, uh, record a, a radio spot that uh, uh, had a heavy rotation for two months. 
uh, on the um, local radio broadcast uh, that is Radio Baboleo. And uh, this regarding uh, and uh, um, the, the news uh, uh, was sent out on a local newspaper, the physical one. And uh, um, then we prepared the video you, uh, you saw at the beginning of the presentation. Uh, and uh, that is uh, structured in uh, um, four section and for each section we sent out uh, uh, advertised the post on Facebook and uh, on uh, our uh, um, on the Genoa municipality Facebook page and then uh, uh, we uh, started uh, and um, let's say and um, an appointment uh, uh, every week on Thursday, uh, Thursday uh, af in the afternoon. Each uh, uh, each week we had uh, uh, we have a, a post dedicated to the digital folder, uh, um, telling a citizen the, uh, what is going on uh, about new services, uh, uh, about the possibility that uh, that the, the citizen digital folder uh, gave to each user about the features and so on. And uh, uh, we sent out this uh, um, uh, communication campaign in, uh, I think, if, uh, if I remember well, in May. And so with uh, the uh, weekly post, uh, we are going on, uh, we have uh, a program uh, arriving to, uh, for now, to the end of January 2022, but new services are in plan and we are working on it, on them. So I think that we have a lot of things to, to tell to the, uh, to the cities by using this kind of uh, uh, channel. Uh, Thank you, Laria. Yeah, there are other other okay. um, other questions. Uh, I think uh, maybe on the way of entering the the, the platform, uh, if you have to. How do you use, okay uh, to Bogdan? Name. Okay, do you use some form of digital signature or just username and password? Uh, user are allowed to enter to the digital folder only through their. Um, uh, electronic identity card or through the uh, uh, Italian uh, digital identity system that he, he has a, a, a level two of security. So they register with their uh, uh, email address uh, with the password that they set uh, when they uh, enrolled this, uh, this system and uh, 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 they received an OTP on their smartphone uh, uh, in order to ensure the security of uh, the, the, the environment. Thank you, I understand. Okay, thank you for your question. There is another okay, question from exactly Pierre. The city of Marseille seek to, and your respect. Oh, thank you, okay. If you have any question in a second time, we are completely available, Lorraine, for, uh, uh, supporting you in uh, any kind of decision. Uh, are the citizen identified without giving their opening, uh, their IDs? Uh, I think this question is more or less the one okay, you asked before, okay. I think. And there is a question from Pierre Sibert, uh, uh, if it is suitable so, uh, for people with disabilities. Okay, uh, we uh, are... Um, uh, mandatory by law to uh, um, to build up website by following uh, uh, accessible uh, uh, regulation uh, and so uh, did that, this uh, happened for the uh, um, institutional website of the municipality and we followed uh, this kind of rules uh, we had to follow by law also for the the digital folder so uh, for um, the visual uh, disability, uh, we are following the rules. Uh, I'm sorry, I do not, uh, I don't know uh, information for not, uh, uh, for, um, for um, not acoustic, uh, for people with uh, um, blindness. I don't know if uh, it is supported with a uh, uh, voice guide, uh, uh, integrated with the 
uh, the PC, I can ask uh, and uh, answer in a second time if you are interested to. Thank you very much, Ilaria. It has been very, well, we know and we are very <laughs> excited. So we decided we strongly support your participation in, in this meeting because we think it is a really a great, uh, a great system and a great step forward in the, um, in the digitalization of services and in the um, improvement of uh, quality of life of citizens, uh, I think. So thank you. We will. Uh, I hope uh, that there will be other possibility of uh, collaboration. And uh, and uh, I I repeat our uh, greatness to 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 have you here. Uh, I I now uh, pass the the floor to Azenia uh, Dimitrova, who will uh, introduce. Uh, our uh, next uh, speaker. Uh, thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Uh, so our final presentation for this event will take us to the academic field to with an overview of Bulgaria's achievements in the digitalization of public administration, or shall we say the lessons that have been learned in the past two decades. And our last speaker is Dr. Juliana Hajicioneva. She's a senior assistant professor at the Department of Administration and Management of New Bulgarian University. She has more than 25 years of professional experience in the public, non-government and private sector in terms of policy making, research and expertise for modernization and improving, improving business environment and public policies, management, consulting and education. Um, Dr. Hajicioneva, we're so glad to have you today. Um, I think um, hardly can we imagine a better moment for such an overview, given the crucial situation that Bulgaria is uh, currently in. One might even say that's a, a promising or a prospective moment, but I guess we're about to find out uh, in the next 15 minutes. So the floor is yours. Please unmute yourself and uh, share your PowerPoint. Thank you very much. I'm sharing now my um, PowerPoint. Is it okay? Yes, we can see. Thank yes. You. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let me say that, um, yeah, now I'm on the board of uh, Academia, but uh, many years, uh, exactly uh, 15. Uh, years uh, I have been uh, on the other border of uh, the public administration uh, uh, board uh, as a civil servant uh, and uh, in crucial years uh, for, uh, for reforms uh, in uh, public administration uh, uh, in Bulgaria and uh, also uh, uh, related uh, with uh, digitalization. Now, um, it, it is interesting uh, 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 to say maybe, um, uh, thank you very much for, for this invitation. It, it was um, really uh, um, uh, surprised, uh, uh, surprised because uh, I made uh, a research uh, before the crisis uh, of uh, COVID-19, but uh, it was published only these days uh, and um, it is uh, um, related uh, with your topic, uh, uh, with uh, the digitalization and uh, the public administration. I guess that uh, it will be interesting for you to see what uh, have been the paths of uh, Bulgaria uh, in this way and uh, what are our lessons uh, maybe were, maybe not um, uh, uh, not worn uh, uh, by these uh, uh, days. Uh, let me start uh, as um, somebody um, now in the academia to clear uh, this um, um, uh, main concept uh, about uh, digitalization uh, uh, and um, uh, to say that um, uh, nowadays uh, um, we are uh, talking about uh, three stage 
of uh, uh, progress uh, in uh, the digitalization uh, uh, and uh, uh, the digital transformation. The first one linked it, uh, with uh, the conversion from uh, analog uh, to digital format, uh, uh, let's say uh, computer easy to, to read uh, format. Uh, then the digitalization uh, in its itself uh, is um, um, uh, um, related with uh, the automation of uh, the operations uh, of the processes uh, to level of integration and uh, interoperability of uh, the uh, uh, information uh, systems. It is clear uh, that um, um, in Bulgaria we made uh, many many steps in uh, this uh, in uh, this uh, way to to integrate uh, and to uh, and to to make a better interoperability. But uh, uh, when uh, I'm hearing here my colleagues from uh, uh, Genoa about the fascicolo del cittadino. Um, I, I could say that, uh, uh, well, um, at uh, this moment, uh, uh, maybe we have been uh, too more centralized uh, and maybe we need uh, um, uh, uh, a more decentralized approach uh, for, for this. Uh, and um, uh, whilst uh, um, about uh, the digital transformation, uh, it is about uh, all the reward, rebirth, uh, rebirth of uh, organizations uh, uh, that is centered uh, on uh, customers. Uh, um, well, it is about the cultural, uh, uh, but also uh, strategic uh, uh, rebirth. Uh, so, um, out uh, on all those uh, stages, uh, we could find uh, different uh, challenges. Uh, um, if uh, we uh, should talk about uh, more material uh, challenges uh, on uh, the first step uh, of, um, uh, of this process, uh, uh, then we could um, uh, find uh, more uh, financial uh, challenges. Uh, and uh, on uh, the last type of digital transformation, uh, uh, we need, uh, let's say, more human capital, more skilled uh, uh, persons, uh, more skilled and uh, tech leaders. Uh, well, um, digital transformation, uh, it is um, about, uh, um, it is, um, uh, oops, uh, about um, uh, uh, those uh, uh, different uh, kinds of, uh, of um, uh, let's say, definitions uh, just beyond the mere transformation uh, uh, from analog to, to uh, digital. And um, let's uh, see something. Okay. Um, and not just about uh, automation of processes, but creation of uh, entirely new opportunities uh, with uh, significantly and radically improvements uh, and uh, with uh, new investments uh, to impact all aspects of uh, customer life. Uh, well, um, uh, we should not uh, talk today about technology. Technology, uh, it, Sure, it is behind all those processes, but we need to talk about new strategies. And if we go back to to those days in mid 90s, when the processes of transformation and economic and social transition of our country. Um, uh, have been um, a reality. Uh, we will uh, uh, we will see that um, uh, the um, um, the uh, the concept of um, uh, e-government, uh, which is a better government uh, to provide better public uh, services uh, to city to citizens, is there. The e-government. Uh, has been embraced uh, uh, quite uh, 
uh, as another hope, uh, a kind of um, engine uh, on uh, for the process uh, and uh, a tool for new management uh, and uh, new governance uh, quality and uh, efficiency. Um, in um, 93, uh, uh, we, um, uh, we uh, had uh, something, a uh, discussion about uh, uh, how, how to reinvent, uh, how to make uh, the reinvention of government uh, by achieving better, a better government rather than continuing the continuous uh, discussion of, uh, of uh, more or less uh, government. Uh, uh, so better, better government um, uh, is uh, aimed at uh, citizens uh, and uh, their needs. Uh, um, also changes um, are needed to, to be accomplished, uh, establishing a new uh, institutional uh, culture and uh, work uh, organization. So the process, uh, let's say, in our country started uh, in uh, those years, in 19th, in the late 19th, and um, it has been uh, accompanied by um, numerous uh, strategic papers and uh, um, normative uh, legislative procedures uh, and multiple, multiple institutional uh, organizational ch uh, changes. Uh, and uh, of course, all this uh, has been based on a project-oriented uh, approach of uh, finding. And here you could see uh, the um, uh, in three slides, uh, I'm uh, giving you um, uh, this um, uh, this table um, uh, that I made uh, uh, in uh, attempt uh, to summarize uh, uh, all those uh, initiatives uh, on um, uh, three different uh, uh, levels. Uh, let's say uh, uh, what. Uh, has been done uh, in the field of um, strategies, uh, also in the field of uh, regulations uh, and um, uh, coordination and uh, organization of uh, the digitalization processes. Uh, yes, it is uh, on uh, uh, national uh, level. And um, uh, yes, it, it was very centralized uh, and yes, uh, uh, it is uh, related uh, uh, with the three uh, directions uh, of the existing uh, interactions um, uh, between administration and citizens uh, and uh, administration and uh, business and also administration, uh, administration, uh, the internal processes uh, within the public uh, administration. So we will see here that um, uh, we, we had uh, a body um, with um, uh, such functions of uh, coordination and uh, control over the um, uh, information uh, society uh, issues. Uh, in that period, uh, um, uh, maybe you don't know, but Bulgaria ranked uh, among the first European countries uh, that um, uh, developed uh, these uh, strategic uh, documents in the view of uh, the uh, electronic uh, government. Uh, government. Uh, well, uh, we started well. Uh, um, uh, we, you could uh, see here that uh, we had um, every year, every year, different um, uh, strategies and action plans. Uh, uh, and um, and uh, road paths um, uh, linked uh, uh, with um, the interoperability and uh, how to 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 be better and better and still today we could not uh, unfortunately uh, say that uh, we have um, did a great work. Uh, uh, let me uh, tell you that in uh, those. Uh, years here since uh, the development of uh, the electronic governance uh, in Bulgaria was uh, quite dynamic uh, since uh, 2005 uh, 
uh, and uh, it was characterized uh, uh, by the establishment of uh, uh, further Lego uh, framework like uh, the wall on uh, e-commerce, uh, the wall on uh, electronic uh, communications, uh, the law on uh, electronic uh, governance uh, with uh, numbers, numbers of uh, secondary Act. So we are using here in Bulgaria, it is likely not the case in Italia, the electronic uh, signature. Well, um, my uh, research uh, uh, is uh, almost uh, to, uh, yes, uh, 2018. Uh, and um, there is um, no big difference uh, in uh, in this uh, trend of uh, producing, uh, uh, let's say, um, uh, documents. Uh, on on the right side, uh, I guess uh, uh, you see uh, um, what um, um, are the, uh, the the uses. Uh, you could see um, uh, two. Uh, uh, two interesting uh, tables uh, about uh, um, where, how Bulgaria is ranked uh, in uh, the e-government survey of uh, UN uh, for all those uh, years. Um, uh, well, um, uh, our position is um, um, quite poor. Uh, and uh, e-participation also, uh, but uh, it is interesting to see uh, uh, the uh, how many people are using the internet to interact uh, with uh, public uh, institutions uh, in, uh, this, uh, in this period? Uh, let's say that um, uh, this uh, kind of uh, data uh, have been, uh, and is also um, uh, this day reported uh, in a special report on administration uh, state, um, and um, only 22% uh, of uh, people are using uh, uh, the internet to interact uh, with uh, the, the uh, institutions, uh, uh, which is, um, although um, any real uh, change uh, from uh, previous uh, years, uh, they are only 17% uh, of people uh, that are seeking uh, in uh, uh, seeking information uh, from uh, uh, institutions uh, website uh, uh, only 10% uh, that are downloading forms uh, and only 10% uh, that are sending uh, completed forms uh, to uh, institutions uh, using the internet if we compare those uh, data between uh, 2018 with uh, 2000 uh, 12, uh, uh, we observe um, uh, even a diminution of uh, the online uh, interaction between uh, the citizens uh, and the public uh, institutions. Uh, if we compare the, the data on uh, people using uh, the internet to um, uh, interact uh, with uh, institutions uh, in Bulgaria and in EU, uh, for uh, the same period, uh, we observe a progressive trend uh, of the online administrative services uh, users uh, in uh, EU, while it is not uh, the case uh, in uh, Bulgaria, unfortunately. Uh, let's see, uh, what about all this? Uh, what uh, could we say about uh, some, um, um, some uh, uh, insights? Uh, well, it is clear that uh, at the political level, uh, we see a consistent uh, and systematic uh, statement uh, of uh, political will uh, for the implementation and uh, development of uh, digitalization or with uh, the old uh, term e-gov. Uh, we see strong uh, dynamic um, uh, in that time uh, uh, in uh, wall making uh, and strategic planning uh, uh, with clear strategic visions uh, all the time uh, in those years, uh, even that uh, sometimes uh, they are overlapped uh, in multiple strategic uh, documents. Uh, um, concerning the organizational uh, and coordination uh, structure, we see that uh, it is quite uh, unsustainable and uh, even subject of uh, uh, very frequent uh, uh, reorganization and restructuring. 
um, we need for sure greater transparency, greater communication uh, uh, with society and uh, uh, and um, accountability for the actions uh, and achievements. Uh, uh, all this is uh, still in deficit in our uh, in, uh, in uh, our nowadays. Uh, uh, when something is done, we need to know that it is done. We need to know that this step uh, is uh, uh, is done. And. Um, uh, what else? Uh, we see a gap uh, between the institutions. Uh, maybe our approach is too institutional. Uh, gap between institutions, uh, citizens, uh, businesses uh, about readiness, uh, the uh, opportunities, uh, the expectations uh, for the e-services delivery and efficiency of uh, the institutions. Um, so, um, and as I said, uh, maybe um, a big uh, uh, fort uh, is um, uh, the two centralized uh, mechanism of uh, all this um, uh, process. Uh, by the way, talking about uh, Italia and hearing now the um, uh, experience of uh, Italians, uh, I should say that in those uh, very dynamic years uh, in uh, 2006, uh, we have been uh, in uh, Italy uh, um, just for this, uh, just to, uh, to um, uh, um, see your experience about uh, Sportello Unico, uh, one stop shop, Sportello Comunale. Um, it, it was um, uh, it was an attempt in, in those years uh, to um, uh, to embrace uh, this uh, interesting uh, um, experience uh, concerning our business uh, delivery services, but it has uh, uh, hasn't been the case, uh, unfortunately. So let's say uh, something about uh, the, um, uh, the 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 other. Uh, topic uh, the, uh, the 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 city the smart city. Uh, here you see uh, uh, our cover of uh, uh, this book uh, uh, coming from a conference um, uh, from uh, 2018 with uh, many colleagues uh, from around the world, and it is only now that uh, is. Uh, it is published, but um, uh, what is important there, um, the city digital transformation dri drivers, uh, those uh, the uh, economic uh, related uh, uh, with uh, efficiency, productivity, growth, infrastructure, inequality, entrepreneurship, uh, business sophistication, and so on, so on. Social uh, related to talent, uh, demography, uh, consumer expectations, uh, citizen uh, uh, activity, civil participation, and so on, so on. Technological um, uh, issues uh, related uh, to big data, open data, artificial intelligence, cloud, etc. Political uh, related to uh, supranational organizations, initiatives, uh, and common uh, uh, policies. Uh, uh, the ecological um, uh, also drivers uh, related to resources management uh, and different uh, kind of uh, problems uh, with uh, ecology and globalization uh, related to um, uh, information networks, uh, intelligence, uh, mobility. Let's see now uh, one of um, uh, the um, known uh, in uh, the field uh, um, uh, uh, index, uh, uh, cities in uh, motion. Uh, well, in um, uh, the last uh, uh, last um, uh, publication uh, uh, for um, the index of uh, 2020, uh, Sofia city uh, has been. Uh, you see. Uh, uh, on um, on uh, one hundred sixteen position, uh, uh, in, and uh, has um, uh, main uh, deficits uh, uh, exactly uh, in the those um, uh, uh, 
those um, issues related to economy, to the technical development, uh, uh, and uh, so uh, and city planning. Um, um, main problems uh, here are related with um, the overall uh, culture and um, and um, um, uh, business environment. Uh, uh, all those burdens uh, uh, of uh, administrative and regulatory uh, environment uh, at municipal level and uh, no uh, good working uh, public-private uh, partnership. Uh, um, will it be different after the uh, post-COVID? Uh, uh, um, I'm sure that um, uh, the expectations, uh, and we see this uh, nowadays, uh, are even more um, uh, strong of uh, our uh, uh, society uh, uh, for, for the uh, policies and uh, policy people. And uh, I'm sure that um, our key skills uh, are quite uh, better uh, in um, comparison before the, the, uh, the COVID. Uh, um, I could, uh, um, I could conclude. Um, I wanted to uh, to say something about uh, ah uh, yes, I see it uh, here. Um, the difference between um, uh, the Sofia, the capital, and uh, the other big uh, uh, cities in uh, in uh, Bulgaria, uh, as uh, you could see, uh, if uh, Sofia has uh, more or less intensive development uh, um, with uh, this uh, 86 position uh, in the startup uh, ecosystem rankings of uh, the 1,000 cities in the world of uh, startup blink. Uh, Varna is uh, so um, Plovdiv and uh, Burgasa uh, on uh, on uh, not so good uh, positions. Uh, I could say in a few words um, uh, and um, uh, my recommendations. Uh, um, um, related uh, with uh, uh, those uh, uh, four five um, um, uh, uh, four five uh, uh, problems. Uh, uh, let's say uh, we need less. We need uh, 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 less is, is more. Let's have uh, uh, concrete steps, uh, uh, but to do them. Uh, quickly and uh, uh, with a good quality. Uh, we have a big problem here in Bulgaria with uh, electronic services, and it is exactly the quality of uh, the, the platforms. Uh, uh, we see that uh, in Italy, uh, the, 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 uh, it is, uh, uh, yes, personalized, uh, uh, but it is very friendly and it is uh, easy to do. It is rated with uh, mo mobile acc uh, accessibility and it is, uh, they are oriented uh, uh, on uh, scenarios uh, of uh, life. Uh, it is not the, 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 the case uh, here. It is not at all friendly. We need more quality for all those um, uh, digital services. So quick gains uh, uh, on the base of uh, real needs, uh, not just uh, Strategies and big um, um, and big expectations, uh, just to see the real need, just to 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 make quick uh, gains, uh, and um, uh, on the base of active dialogue dialogue uh, with uh, 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 the um, uh, stakeholders uh, uh, with shared goals. Um, uh, let's see the cost benefit scenarios. Uh, uh, right now, and uh, to to make more public-private partnerships uh, for a smarter city. And um, with this, uh, uh, maybe I um, yes, I stop. Uh, I guess uh, I had uh, some more minutes. Uh,
but you see the academia is like this, uh, starting talking and never ending. Yeah, I, I'm stopping the presentation, okay. <laughs> okay. And I hope that uh, it, it was interesting for you to see all this uh, um, way um, of um, the Bulgarian digitalization. Perhaps I can allow myself a question. Um, so it has been said on multiple occasions already today and yesterday that national frameworks may significantly limit the possibilities of local authorities when it comes to digitalization. So I was wondering at the moment, is any maneuvering at the city level possible at all in Bulgaria? Oh, let's say that um, uh, when there is a will, there is a way to, to do it. So uh, if um, uh, this message uh, pass, uh, passes uh, 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 to higher level, uh, um, the, the, the uh, legislation is just um, a way, um, a tool for, for, for um, um, better life and uh, uh, better government, you see, at national, and local levels, both. And perhaps maybe a second question. And uh, you dis you mentioned several cities uh, on one of your last uh, slides, uh, but um, maybe are these the city champions in Bulgaria that deserve a mention? Can we speak of city champions at all? Or maybe some uh, good practices from the city level when it comes to digital uh, transformation of services? Yeah, for... Um... For now, I, I don't see, um, um, or I, um, I could not uh, um, straight away um, give um, a, a big uh, champion uh, and um, a very good uh, practice. Uh, um, I think that uh, Sofia is the leader. Uh, yes, it's clear, but, um, but, um, uh, in the, the last uh, years, uh, the truth is that uh, we didn't uh, um, uh, proceed uh, with uh, a big success uh, on, uh, on this way. Well, we have um, amazing uh, new strategies, visions uh, for Sofia, for, but uh, we need to be more concrete. We need to, uh, to, to have something real. As I said, quick gains. Thank you. That's a good message. Hopefully, it will become a reality soon. I hope so. OK, thank you very much for, for this, uh, this presentation. and. Uh, uh, still uh, inspiring. I think that it will be the word for the our two days uh, webinar. Um, uh, if there is no more question, uh, I propose that we move to our second sessions uh, this morning uh, to talk about the updates about the UDG program. Uh, thank you again. And uh, Asenia, <laughs> the floor is back to you. Um, okay, well, I'm just going to share one one single slide with you when it comes to communication. Um, I hope you can see it right now. And um, it's just a few things in terms of communication and how you can stay up updated about the project outside of the events that uh, have been ongoing, of course. Um, so we're currently, first of all, we're currently collecting all the slides from our speakers in order to upload them on the project website. Um, so please give us a few days. We want to make them all available at once, but this will be done. Um, as uh, Lorraine already said, the recordings for the two days will also be shared on the project website soon. Uh, speaking on the web um, of the website, which you can see hopefully on my slide. Um, 
you can um, it's actually the easiest way to follow the latest around EU digit uh, but please don't hesitate to follow us on Twitter on Facebook uh, and um, this is uh, actually the quickest way to um, not to miss any information and communication uh, you can also actively opt in to receive news uh, uh, from EU digit I've been sending I've been communicating with you um, over email but uh, unless uh, you opted in to to receive communication actively upon registration you might not get it, get any emails from me so now is the time to change it just uh, send me a line with your email address if you want to learn more about the project um, and uh, I hope most of you are already familiar with the fact that we produce electronic booklets uh, ebooks following each seminar each webinar so uh, we are currently um, working on the one uh, from this webinar as well. Those of you, um, as I said, who opted to receive news will get it by email when once it is ready after the holidays, of course, uh, but it will also be available on the project website. Until now, you can already uh, see uh, the one ebook dedicated to young people, uh, which uh, was issued uh, after the first uh, webinar, and the second one, which is dedicated to seniors after the um, second webinar from Hamburg. Um, they have also been translated into all the languages of the partnership, so um, they're very convenient for um, whichever um, version works best for you, so don't hesitate to download them and spread it among uh, your colleagues. And um, we're Probably, um, I think Marseille is going to speak a little bit about that, but uh, we're also working on the dates and the format of uh, our next webinar. Hopefully it will be seminar, uh, but uh, once again, if you want to be the first to know uh, the dates and the format and maybe get the chance to participate uh, uh, physically eventually, make sure to subscribe for news and follow us on the channels that you see on the screen. And that was all for my side. I give the floor back to um, to Marseille for the final remarks. Marseille? Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I said thank you, Asenia, and uh, then we will be closing uh, this this um, one day a half um, uh, webinar. I would like to talk about, uh, on the behalf of uh, Pierre Chaillon, who is the project manager of the, the UDG project here, but he couldn't uh, attend this morning, unfortunately. So um, uh, we would like to thank you all for um, all your contribution uh, to this webinar, which was uh, to us very rich. And uh, special thanks to the city of Genova um, for organizing this webinar and to uh, Levante Poliak who moderated yesterday's session and also a senior from the mayor.eu uh, um, who uh, were, um, was really involved um, on several issues. Uh, we already knew that exchanging on the issue of uh, digital tools and cities policies for a citizen is short, a short time uh, was just an opening door, but it's also, oh, it's already a door opened, I, I would say. Um, we are uh, reaching now at the middle of the bridge of the, the project, the UDG project, and we did let's say a great job during this year, uh, a kickoff meeting and three successful uh, seminars. So the Varna, Hamburg and, uh, and Genoa and a better comprehension uh, of the stakes and knowledge of citizens needs and local um, stakeholder action. Uh, it wasn't easy to do everything we manage in a such trouble context. And uh, we will be we can be really proud of ourselves uh, for the work we have been done and it's important to uh, keep a positive mind <laughs> and um, we don't think that uh, in, two tw in, in 2021 a lot of European projects for citizens uh, have been developed so congratulations and maybe we could do better but we have done our best to present practices and new ideas to improve the daily life of citizens so 
we all learn from each other and let's remain uh, focused and positive, as I said, for the future of the project. Um, to conclude, uh, yes, it's true, uh, Senia, we will talk about the next meeting to take place, hopefully in Rotterdam, uh, that will focus on digitalization and disabled people. Uh, the seminar will tar target a specific group uh, who are disadvantaged, um, both in the real and the virtual world. Uh, it will be an interesting topic to deal with in connection with uh, current events in Europe, European issues and to renew ourselves uh, we will have to propose or to incorporate maybe some uh, novelty in the way of uh, organizing this seminar I don't know and we really hope that the conference will be organized uh, in the Netherlands uh, so that we can meet all together with really many more citizens and invite uh, some stakeholders We'll see, and let me add uh, or share a, a joke from, from Pierre. Uh, uh, it will be a very nice uh, to visit one of the best ports of Europe after Marseille. <laughs> um, well, in, in few minutes, uh, we will have, uh, we will meet all the six uh, partners, uh, City and the Meyer, um, the EU network to discuss about the continuation of uh, our project and the update agenda. And um, I mean, if uh, if there is no other remark or, or comments, we will conclude. <laughs> and <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course, Esmeral. Thank you, Esmeral. Uh, <laughs> And uh, so I would like to, we would like to thank you uh, all and, uh, and we wish you a very good uh, Christmas uh, break. So thank you. <laughs>